So that Ernie, I came to Louisiana and I had a bull whip. So what does a bull whip mean down south? It means slavery days. Brother, I would go out in some of those towns and Ernie loved it because, <clears throat> and I, I have gone out in towns with that bull whip and the, and the, the fans that we would draw, they would be a predominantly black town in Louisiana. All the fans were 90% African-American. I swear to God, one night, the, one of the most eeriest feelings I ever had in my life. I forgot where I was. The some town in Louisiana, and I looked out, nothing but Afro-Americans. A sprinkling of uh, uh, Caucasians here and there. And I walked out there with that bull whip. Brother, silence. <laughs> but the silence was deafening to me because I'm saying, these people believe that I am representing the slave master. Of course, I went in the ring. I guess I was yet snowman. Brother, and they introduced him, the house came in. They wanted him to literally kill me. So at the end, of course, he won the match. And I got that. I got him down and I went for that bull whip. I saw him coming. And when I saw that, because we had this set up anyway, I told him when I go like this, you know, grab it. And we pull, pull, pull. Then you get it. And then when he got it, the house come down again. And I said, I want you to take me by the hair, you know, be hit me with the whip. Take me back to the dressing room. Because I wanted him to escort me back. That's because the crowd wouldn't get on me. <clears throat> but that's one of the. That was a eerie, eerie feeling. Even though you said, "Well, it's a, it's a setup. It's it's just a it's just make the book crap." Because when you touch an issue like that, of course, Watts didn't have any. He didn't have any qualms about touching it. This was, I don't even know when this was. It was probably in the eighties, I guess. But still, it was it was alive and well <clears throat> during that period. Because Ernie Ladd told me one time, I brought him with me, he said, brother, brother. Because he would tell me football stories when he played in the NFL. And he told me this story one time. He said, that's man. He said, I was a little bitty boy. He said, my grandmama, she'd call us in around the, the big fireplace. And she built a big fire. He said, me and my cousin, we'd sit around <clears throat> and we'd listen to my grandmama tell stories about our ancestors back in slavery days and tell them about this and about that. I said, oh, wow. So <clears throat> those stories, like I tell stories here, <clears throat> Ernie still had stories that his grandmother told him. And it's about the slave owner, the slave master, and the whip. And, you know, they had, it was brutal. It was brutal. But I, just because some stupid bastard had that 100 years ago or 150 years ago, don't mean I've got to be punished for it now. And at the time when I went to Louisiana, I, I looked at that whip and I said, I wish I'd never met you. <laughs> I threw that so much over in the corner. And I actually refused to take it out a few times. <laughs> and then one say, where's the bull whip? You're not taking it. I said, oh, I forgot it. I forgot. <laughs> I didn't forget it. I just left it. <laughs> I just but that's to, my story about Louisiana. Well, I just want to clarify, actually. You said Ernie Ladd, and then at one point you mentioned the snowman. But that wasn't the snowman, the wrestler, was it? Or Snowman, the wrestler. Right. From Memphis. Yeah. Which was, I had a match with him on TV one day. Because Watts, he loved, he loved that shit. I'm telling you, he'd put me against every Afro-American wrestler that came in. <laughs> Butch, Butch Reed, uh, uh, the snowman. Whoever, George, whatever his name was, I was against them all, Skip Young, everybody. But went out there one time on TV, Eddie, Eddie Gilbert was my manager. I don't know why. But I swear to God, the first match I, I got on uh, Snowman, I think this is still on YouTube, and he hit, he was the shits of throwing punches. He hit me so hard, bam, cut my eye. Damn. 
So then I took over on him and I forgot what happened, but Oh, I, I know he made a big comeback on me and Eddie Gilbert was supposed to slip me the chair and snowman took it away from me. Then I took it away from him. You know what receipt is, right? Well, for this, and I'm, I'm already doing my, I guess I hit him so hard. His knees buckled and down he went. Then he come up and I took off. Boy, and I got back and they said, oh, wow, boy, snowman, y'all going to have a fight. You get back here. Oh, you made him mad now, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, fuck him. <laughs> I said, hell, he hit me. I hit him. <clears throat> and he come through the door. And, you know, first, he come through like, God, yeah, yeah. he's raising hell. Guess what the first thing he did? He come up to me and said, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> he never said nothing about the chair shot, which I'm glad. I was gonna have to. My, my I was. I don't know if you can still see it, but he he kind of popped me a good one there. But Snowman, if you could, if you knew how to work with him, he was okay. But other than that, he was a little reckless. Uh, very quickly, did Bill Watts ever fine you? No. I made sure when I left to, I didn't leave an address so he couldn't find me <laughs> again. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 